All right. So we're going to talk about small motor. And another word you'll see is fine motor. Fine motor and small motor mean exactly the same thing. You can use those words interchangeably. There's no, no difference in them. Uh, both are talking about skills that involve the small muscles, the fingers or the toes, the hands. So they involve more precise movements, more dexterity. As a general kind of rule of thumb, girls precede boys in fine motor skills. Uh, that's probably largely due to our culture, which uh, stresses opportunities for girls to practice fine motor skills. All children show improvement in fine motor skills with practice. So fine motor is an area where the more you do, the better uh, and more skilled you become. From the time from infancy to toddlerhood to early childhood to elementary school, we see huge strides for all children in that time in fine motor skills. And there are a great deal of individual differences from child to child coming from their genes and biology, but to a great extent, differences in their experience, uh, differences in the opportunities they have to practice. So one of some of the first fine motor skills we see in infants are reaching and grasping, and that requires knowledge of visual sense of space, of hand-eye coordination, being able to put together the motor skill with the perceptual skill. So this is, you'll remember that word proximo distal, which means from the center out. And that's kind of the story with motor skills. So we'll see the initial reaches is almost a large motor kind of movement, moving the whole arm and from the shoulder, uh, crude sort of movements that become more controlled with development. And so we're looking at just movements of the hand and wrist into more control of just the fingers. A pinch or grasp we see well, by around the time we transition into toddlerhood, uh, coordinating the thumb and forefinger to pick up things, and this becomes more precise uh, during those first two years. By age three, young children are still emerging from that infant and toddler ability to, to pick things up with that pincher grasp and handle them and put them into specific places. That coordination improves at age four, becomes more precise, and by kindergarten age of five, we see combined movements of hand, arm, body, better hand-eye coordination, dexterity, and control. Now, I'm not gonna read this entire chart to you, but what I want you to understand as you look at this chart is that this year is for the third year of life, the fourth, and the fifth. So three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, and for each age, these uh, go down in, in the approximate order of difficulty. So building a three block bridge will usually not be as difficult as building the eight block tower. Uh, and so these become more difficult as you go through the list. And also I want you to understand that these are, are typical kinds of skills for that age range. This doesn't mean that all children have all these skills at a given age. And there's going to be a range that's completely developmentally appropriate for when you see the emergence of any of these fine motor skills. So this is a guide, a rule of thumb, and recognize that individual differences in biology and in culture in terms of children's experience with these different sorts of activities are going to have uh, profound impacts on the timing. And so there is a range for when you see the emergence of any, any skill. And you'll remember that DAP model where we think of age-related expectations, but we also think of individual differences and differences from the culture and environment. Uh, one skill is scissors, paste, and glue. And, and this is just a picture that shows some different uh, cutting scissors for use with preschoolers. You see that some uh, are really, they only require the, the pinch down. Uh, some have extra holes for, for an adult to guide and cut along with the younger child and so on. By 
that transition from toddlerhood to preschool at about age two to three, most children will will snip a paper easily. If you if you give them a strip of paper, they'll cut, 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 and make snips across it. But many of the young children at this age hold scissors incorrectly. They may they may hold the scissors turned around and facing towards themselves. Uh, they they don't have very control and they'll make snips in one long slip. If they use paste and glue, it'll, it'll be sort of a big glob and there's not much control about where in particular that goes. By three to four, most children will make a full cut with one uh, long strip. So it'll cut down and then start again and then cut down and then start again and then cut down. So if you look at the line that they cut off in the, those zagged, those zagged, those jagged edges, that are about the, the length of one cut of that scissors. They may still have a hand position incorrect. At this age, it's common to kind of hold the scissors upside down like this so that your fingers are at the top and your thumbs are at the bottom. That's common, but it's not, not necessary. Uh, they begin to be able to make two full cuts, and but they have trouble cutting on a straight line. So for a three-year-old, if you can give them a piece of construction paper with a, a thick mark across it, they can follow along that straight line by going cut, 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 cut. Uh, they're beginning to use that index finger to purposefully apply paste and glue to a specific spot, um, but they'll still use globs and it'll, it'll be more control than at two years old. Here's a picture. Uh, see how his hands are upside down there? Uh, he's, have, he's able to have better control than when a two-year-old, for example, points the scissors towards themselves. So he's he has better control there, but he's still not flipping them over, which would be the, the most precise control. By four to five, most children can cut a straight line and a 90 degree angle. So they stop the line and then cut the other hand or cut the other angle. They they move the hand that's holding the paper forward and they'll use correct position to hold the scissors. Uh, they'll keep paste and glue in the right spot. They'll use a, a reasonable amount. And by kindergarten or age five to six, most children can cut along a curve. They can cut out shapes or interior angles, uh, shapes from magazines, uh, obtuse or acute angles, which are those greater or less than 90 degrees. Uh, and they can use scissors as a part of, of making or constructing a, a bigger art project. Uh, so just as a step in that in that process so again I, I, I want to remind you these are our guidelines they're not saying that all children have the skill at the same age uh, because there are great differences here in terms of children's experience and to when they demonstrate that skill some typical ages for self-help skills are two to three year olds uh, most of them eat, are able to eat with a spoon hold a cup with one hand put on their coat it's easier to unbutton clothes than to button them. And so usually children will be able to unbutton them first. It's easier to use bigger buttons for, for young hands than to use smaller buttons. By four to five, most children are able to eat correctly with the fork, button and unbutton their clothes, get dressed themselves. They'll, they'll zip a zipper, but they may like have to have a jig jag on it so that it's sort of halting is, is the word that's used there. They can hang up their coat, use scissors, uh, copy triangles, crosses, and some letters. By five to six, most children are unbuttoning, buttoning their clothes, zipping zippers, eating with a knife and fork together, using the knife to cut soft food, dress and undress, comb brush their hair. Uh, tying shoes is now about a, uh, about a six-year-old thing. Um, that used to be more of a kindergarten thing, but we actually tie shoes a little bit later now because uh, so many of our children's shoes have Velcro, so it's not necessary to tie them, and they don't get practice with that. Um, when young children are using art materials, I want to talk about this a little bit. They're, they're often, they're, their paintings are often flat. They're spontaneous. They're, they're, they're not, when young children, are, especially toddlers and preschoolers, are sitting down with the art materials, they're, they're not sitting down with the idea of, I'm going to have this end product. I'm going to have this picture, and this is the direction I'm going. I, 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 
it's they make it up as they go it's 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 a time about process and not the end result and so their their art is sometimes it's almost like they're telling a story that's evolving as as they're going now for our younger toddlers our two-year-olds a lot of the time for example at an art easel or painting at a table is really about the sensory motor experience the feel of the brush on the on the paper and it's completely in the, the here and now they may experiment with mixing colors and they get sort of lost in in the the, the moment as the yellow and blue are making green as they go through the preschool years they'll, they'll sometimes sort of tell a story as the as the drawing or painting goes but what they're having there is an opportunity to to really practice some 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 mathematical skills thinking about space and motion and scale and distance and children go through a, a sequence of stages in those sorts of artistic drawings and there should be some examples of each of these so the placement stage uh, you see these basic kind of scribbles here they're, they're purposefully placing those scribbles at a, at a certain spot on the paper. And that's equivalent of, of about two to three year olds purposefully putting those uh, uh, scribbles into patterns. Around age three, we see the emergence of six basic shapes in children's drawings, a square sort of shape, a cross, an oblong, a circle, an X. And at ages three to four, we enter the design stage where, where children begin to mix those two basic shapes into more complex designs. These circles become combined with the cross or an X or a square with a, with a cross. These kind of shapes are called mandalas. And another thing we see very commonly are called radials. We'll start with a, a solid kind of circle and they'll have lines coming out emerging from those centers. By age five, we begin to see uh, the emergence of, of representational drawings. This has required some symbolic thought. The child is saying, this picture symbol stands as a symbol for something else. And you can see these, these early drawings of, of people here in what looks to me like an early drawing of a sun. You see all those little rays coming out there. Uh, the faces and heads have eyes. You see their arms and legs are emerging out of that body. Uh, for most children in, in the US, uh, one of the first drawings that, that they name as a representational drawing is a sun. And, and you could kind of see a sun person there. They, they've drawn a, a circle and the rays coming out of it in that kind of mandala stage and someone says oh you've drawn the sun and they say yeah i drew the sun and they go around drawing more suns now and naming it that i drew the sun and that sun shape becomes the first tadpole person as the arms are coming out of that sun face the the radials that were coming out of the sun start to become a, a, a sun with a, a face in it and become a named person and that evolves into what's a tadpole person. Uh, as you can see here, the, the body kind of coming out of that head. When they first close off the body, a lot of times they'll just draw a line across here between the little legs. Um, so that the body's kind of closed off but the arms are still coming out of the head for a while. There's a little transition point there where their arms are still, still coming out of their head and that, uh, in that uh, sort of a space between the, the sun face and the tadpole person. Now, again, children really benefit from opportunities to freely explore art materials and experience with using them uh, really uh, contributes to their development of fine motor skills. We also see a, a series, a sequence in stages in writing. Uh, and this is, really shows that proximal distal aspect of development. So in the first stage, thinking here about toddlers, uh, two-year-olds, and they're using, they, they've got that writing instrument and they're using their whole arm, their whole shoulder they, to, to make a big scribble 
on the on the page and we even sometimes see that with three-year-olds the second stage their hand and little finger are resting on the paper but not their forearm and wrist and they're using their hand as sort of a whole unit instead of the more precise control of just the fingers and the third stage the forearm is on the paper there's more wrist rotation the hand is kind of the anchor and the writing is done with the fingers so there's not this gross overall movement of the arm so so here we're seeing that proximal distal from the center out gaining control over time so that your fine motor skill becomes more more precise and controlled those two to three year olds most of them will grab uh, that writing instrument with their whole hand and fist uh, they can kind of scribble and jab at the paper by three to four years most children are can try a three-point grasp but they don't keep a position a consistent position on on that object uh, they can copy shapes they're using horizontal and vertical lines and circles uh, by four to five most children are using a, a correct hand grasp they may hold the, the writing instrument too high or inconsistently sometimes too high or too low uh, and they're, and they're starting to write things like scribbles with spaces between them, starting to draw human figures, and but they, they may have the, the, the facial parts in the wrong area or the arms coming out of the, the head, as, as I showed you. Uh, by five to six, most children are writing their letters. They're, they're able to keep the color from crayons between the lines. They're drawing... Uh, they're starting to draw background things in their pictures like buildings or cars. Now the proportions there can't may be incorrect. There may be a person standing next to their house and the person's bigger than the house. They're adding details like trees and flowers uh, and able to draw shapes. So let me give you the names of those uh, stages in holding the writing or drawing instrument. The first one, sometimes this is called a power grip, but it's, uh, more likely called a supinate grasp. And that's when the toddler holds that writing instrument right in the middle with their whole fist. They're holding it in the fist and kind of using their whole body to, to scribble and mark. It looks like that. See that they're holding it up there. And if you, if you try that, you'll see you don't have a whole lot of precise control. If you tried to write your name holding a pencil like that, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come out very well. The pronate grasp is, is an in-between kind of grasp. Uh, a little more control, the palm is facing down, the finger or the thumb is extended down to the, towards the, the, the end of the writing instrument where it hits the paper. And you can see the child here is using their whole hand. Uh, and you, you can think about it, if you tried this, you'd see that you've got, you have more control over the writing instrument than you did with that supinate grasp, but it's still uh, not as much control as you see with the tripod grip or that more adult style that we sometimes call a precision grip, where we hold the, the uh, instrument between our finger and thumbs. Like, like this is a, is a progress towards that tripod grip. And if you try this, you'll see that you have a lot more control over, over how your writing takes place.